Hey, this is Stephen from Wild Stuff. Welcome to the show. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to shoot in bold mode with cameras such as the Canon EOS M50 and the PowerShot G7X Mark II, despite them not having a physical socket for a remote shutter cable. This video is an update to a previous video I made, and I'll be going into a little more detail to cover some of the things I missed the first time around. The main point I wanted to include in this update is that this little trick isn't exclusive to just the EOS M50, but also works fine on the G7X2 and should also work on lots of other touchscreen cameras, including most of the EOS M range, recent model Canon DSLRs, and some Canon PowerShot models. I imagine it would work on some other brand cameras too, can't hurt to give it a try. So the problem is that I have this big pile of various shutter release cables and remote controls, starting with the little infrared remote, the RS60E3, the RS80N3, and my cheap intervalometer. And none of them will work with the M50 or the G7X at all. And that's because when you look at the EOS M50 body, the only connectivity options you have are a mic port under this flap here, and a USB and HDMI port under the other flap. And here with the G7X, there's nothing on this side except the switch for the pop-up flash, and the same USB and HDMI on the other. Now yes, most cameras these days come with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and you can buy a little dedicated Bluetooth remote control for about 60 Aussie dollars, or pair the camera to your phone and use a smartphone app. Personally, I don't feel like spending $60 on yet another remote, and a phone app doesn't help me when I'm shooting star trails or time lapses with multiple cameras, or if I want to check my Facebook during a long exposure. So, how can we use bold mode then? Firstly, we need to enable bold mode in the camera. We do this by turning our mode dial to manual. Then you'll find the word bold appears in your range of selectable shutter speeds if you scroll past the 30 second option. This is the same on the G7X2. Now that bold mode is activated, we need a way of triggering a shot, which is where the touchscreen comes in. On the M50, Push the menu button and go to screen number 5 under the first set of shooting options. You'll see an option called touch shutter. Enable that. On the G7X2 we're looking for the same option, but you'll find it under the second tab instead. Now you can start a long exposure just by tapping on the screen, waiting for as long as you like, and then tapping again to stop. And likewise on the G7X2. There's a couple of things to be aware of though. Firstly, the camera is likely to want to focus on whichever part of the screen you tap on to start. So if you tap on the background, the camera will follow your tap and your subject will be out of focus. To fix this, either make sure you tap on the part of the screen that you want to be in focus, or switch completely to manual focus. The second issue is that depending on what you're shooting, tapping the screen could wobble the camera enough to ruin the exposure. A good trick to overcome this is to use the two second timer. To set the timer on the M50, press the set button and find the third option down from the top left of the screen, then scroll across to where you can select 10 seconds, 2 seconds or set a custom time. It's much the same on the G7X2, 
except it's the fourth option down. If you found this video helpful, you might also enjoy the next video I'm working on, where I demonstrate how to record proper long exposure time lapses with both the M50 and the G7X2 without being confined to automatic exposures by their built in time lapse video modes. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more equipment discussions.